guys, so I'm gonna be your partner again today for math, if you so chose. And today we're doing 2.4, and um, I'm gonna break this into different videos uh, to save on uploading time. So if I go through 2.4, I'm starting at page 102, and um, the first thing I'd like to see you guys do when you're working in group work is read the directions together so that you are actually clear on what you're supposed to be doing. So, you previously used similar right triangles to show that if you are given a line on a graph, then the slope is the same between any two points on that line. So another thing I'd like you to be able to do is if you read something and it's not 100% clear, to talk through that as a group. So, when I read that, I used to use right triangles to determine the slope of a line on a graph. Okay, I remember doing that. I remember that I would make triangles from one point to another point on a graph by going across and up, and then I'd make my ratio, the change in Y, my rise, over my change in X, my run. So you can see how that's making a right triangle if this is my slope. I would go across and up making that triangle and the ratio of the rise over the run would tell me the slope of the line. Okay, and then I remember that yesterday in math class we did that same thing. We found the change in y and divided it by the change in x by using a table. So I just found two y values and subtracted them to get the difference or the change. And then I found two x values and subtracted them to get the difference or the change and then I made the ratio from those differences. Okay, so then it says um, the converse is also true. Another thing I want you to do during group work is if you come across a word you don't know, Google it, look it up. And so some of us might not know what converse means aside from shoes, so it means the opposite. So the opposite is also true. If the slope between every ordered pair in a table of values is constant, then the ordered pairs will form a straight line. So I can determine that not only from a straight line will I have a constant rate, that a constant rate would also determine that I will have a straight line if I graphed it. Okay, that makes sense to me. So, in order to determine if a table of values presents a linear relationship, we have to show that the slope or my constant rate is consistent. It actually is constant. Um, it's the same between every single set of ordered pairs. Because sometimes you might think you have a constant rate if you just subtract two y values and then the corresponding x values. But if you were to go further down on the table and subtract a different set of y values and x values, you might get a different rate. And then that's not constant, so it's not linear. Okay, I think, I think we could do this. So it says, calculate the slope between the given ordered pairs to determine if they form a straight line. So here on page 102, they told me to calculate the slope between 4 comma 13 and 9 comma 28. So I want you to subtract the two y values. What are the two y values in those ordered pairs? Right. 13 and 28. Do you like my Dora style pause? Okay, what are the two X values? Wrong. No, I'm just kidding. You're right, it's four and nine. So, um, if you subtract 28 minus 13, you then have to subtract nine minus four, because I'm subtracting the ordered pair on the right from the ordered pair on the left. Um, Write that down. What is the change in y over the change in x, or the difference between the two y coordinates divided by the difference between the two x coordinates? You could pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. Did you get four? Good. It's not four, it's three. Okay, so then they asked us to do the same thing, but for the points nine comma 28 and 11 comma 34. What are the Y values for those ordered pairs? Yep, 
34 and 28. So I would subtract 34 minus 28 and put that in the numerator. And then I would subtract 11 minus 9, put that in the denominator. And when I find that unit rate, does that come out to be the same thing as the first one? Yes, they're both three. So make sure that you show all your work, all that subtraction and make those ratios, write that down for problem 1A and 1B. 1C, they're asking us to find the rate of change for 47 minus 34 and 16 minus 11. What do you get when you do that? Is it three? What if it isn't? Then what does that tell us about the line? Or the lack of line? So write that down. It says, will the ordered pairs listed in the table form a straight line when plotted? And explain your reasoning. Um, since I'm your partner and I don't really know, I need your help. So I want you to write down what you think it is and then we can talk about it later. If you're confused, really take some time to think about it. What does it mean if you have a constant rate for a while but then it stops being constant? Then will your graph be in a straight line? How will it affect the way a graph looks? That's what they want you to write down for D. You can pause the video here and write that down. Okay, so for two on page 103, it says determine whether the ordered pairs listed in each table will form a straight line when plotted. Show your work. Okay, so um, in the previous page, we had to subtract um, two of the y values and two of the corresponding x values and make a ratio out of those and divide and to, to find the rate. And we had to do it for a couple different ones to make sure that it was constant. So that's what we're just gonna have to do for A and B here. So I'd like you to do that. How about you do 13 and 7, 6 and 2, and then 34 and 16, and 20 and 8. See what you get. Is it the same rate? If so, then it's linear. If not, then it's not linear. And then do that for a couple of the ordered pairs in B. I'm going to turn the page, but you'll have to pause to do that. Okay, so on 104, it says off to the side that consecutive means one right after the other, such as 12, 13, and 14. So when the values for the independent variable, which are the x values, in a table are consecutive integers, you can examine only the column with the dependent variable. So basically saying that if we have like 1 comma 5, 2 comma 8, 3 comma 11, that I could easily tell that that is consistently going up by 3. Um, if every time I move over 1 on the x, I can clearly see what I'm increasing by on the y if my ordered pairs in the table are consecutive. Um, so that's really helpful. And they show you an example of that. The right example shows that there's a consistent um, decrease. Every time the y goes up, the x goes down by 13. What kind of slope is that? Right, negative. So um, it says that the difference between consecutive values for the dependent variable are the same each time. Therefore, the rate of change will stay the same. So the ordered pairs in this table form a straight line when they're plotted. So if I have a consistent rate of change, whether it's positive or negative, it'll make a straight line when I graph it. In this process, you are calculating first differences. First differences are the values determined by subtracting consecutive y values in a table when the x values are consecutive integers. So basically, if my x values are going in order, then I can just subtract one y value from another and then it'll give me my rate of change because the difference between consecutive numbers is one. And we know our unit rate is always has a denominator of one. Okay, so it says to use the first differences to determine whether the ordered pairs in each table represents a linear relationship. So here they're basically just making what we just did on the previous pages even easier. 
So I think you can do that on your own and then check with me later to make sure that you did it correctly. Maybe reread the directions for question three on 105 to make sure you really understand um, how the book has worded what we're asking you to do, which is just find the rate of change based off of the table. Okay, so now you're going to um, look at talk the talk, walk the walk. It says the table shows the distance that Angela walked compared to the number of steps she took. Can you calculate the slope between each set of ordered pairs? Is there a difference between slope and rate of change? In this situation, there isn't. Um, so if you figure out your rate of change, it's also your slope. Do you remember what variable we use to represent slope in the new equation we've been using? Y equals mx plus b. Right, m. Um, whatever we multiply our x value by is our rate of change because that's what we're going up by for every one x. So if we have five x's, we're going to multiply that by our rate of change to find out how much our y would go up or down by if we had five units on our x. Okay, so then you can calculate the slope based off of that chart and then it says is the graph of this relationship linear? What does this mean in terms of the problem situation? And then it says, um, for number three, the ordered pairs from the table are represented in the given graph. Show how to use the graph to verify the slope you calculated from the table. What does it mean to verify something? So show how to use the graph to prove that the slope you calculated from the table is correct? Okay, well how can I use a graph to prove uh, my slope? Well, I think that um, I could see if the graph shows that every time I move over a certain amount, I go up by the amount that I anticipated based off the slope I thought. Okay, and how is calculating the slope from the table simula similar to calculating a slope from a linear relationship on a graph? We've been talking a lot about that. With the graph, we were using similar triangles. Um, so how does that relate to what we've been doing with the table? I do want you to do this um, and write out the answers without me giving them to you because uh, it's going to give me a pretty good idea whether you understand all this or not. So once you finish that, make sure that you let me know. Thank you for being a really great partner today and I hope you understand it.